Uh, we're going to start with the 299D. Like Phil says, this is the new series. Uh, a couple of the features on the D model that's going to be newer, that uh, is new to this series, is going to be, uh, this will be the first one out with electric quick coupler. Uh, all of our others have a hydraulic quick coupler. They've made the change on this model. Uh, so far, it's worked out real well. No issues, no problems. Uh, another thing is uh, the self-level bucket is it's in all, all the others. Uh, that's only on the way up. On this machine, it's actually self-level on the way up and on the way down. So I don't know if, if that's a big deal, but it seems like a lot of guys like that feature. Uh, another feature on this, on the loader arms, is uh, uh, self-snubbing. In the older machines, when you've got the RPMs going up, you run it clear to the top, it bounces you around a little bit. Uh, when these arms get up to the top now, before it hits the top, it actually catches a little bit and then eases into the very stop point. So it doesn't shake the machine. You guys understand that? Uh, let's see, what else? New manifold on your hydraulic couplers here. Old style is that style right there where they're stacked on top of each other. A lot of guys said that I was kind of a pain in the butt to have these together there. Now we've got it a little better. And then we also added this middle one there is your case drain. So uh, more advanced, a little easier to get to. And then in the other machines, we actually put it, they put a switch in there to uh, relieve the pressure on these lines. People would have trouble getting them hooked up or unhooked. Uh, they've done away with that switch now. They've fixed the problem in these, so you shouldn't have any problem there to hook up or unhook. Does that make sense? Uh, tr if you guys haven't been around these tracks very much, I'll kind of show you guys a little bit about our, how why ours are different right over here. Uh, we're the only one in the industry that has these torsion axles on each side. One's right here, one's right here. That gives us some, some suspension there, some oscillation there. Uh, that gives us a lot better travel over some rough terrain compared to what the competitors have. Some of theirs are just welded right to the frame. They don't have that. They don't have this. Uh, we're going to talk maintenance, so you definitely want to keep these greased up, of course. So if you do need to slide this track off, that's not stuck, it's not almost welded on. Sometimes guys don't grease these like they're supposed to. And uh, when they come into the shop, we try to slide that track off. Uh, there's some cutting and torching going on. You can imagine that. Uh, to make sure you got the right tension on this, uh, CAT spec says you're supposed to jack this machine up, put 100 pounds of weight right here in the middle. Uh, and then you're supposed to have about an inch and three quarters gap there between that bogey and that track. A lot of guys probably don't do that. Um, you know, when they come out of the factory, they're set. So basically, you, you run them for a while, you're probably going to have to tighten them up. If you hear a slapping or you think it's jumping a little bit, that's probably time to put some grease in there. And all that is, take that plate off, grease circ in there, pump it up, runs this ram forward, tightens it up. Pretty, pretty easy. Uh, while we're over here, obviously we've got this safety bar here, lift the arms up, have a guy out here, pulls this pin, locks it up, bucket's locked up. Absolutely. How do, how do we retract that system for changing up there? Uh, right beside the grease circ, there's a, there's a bolt in there. Take that bolt out. That takes that grease. Valve. Yeah. Go back it off. I believe it's a 15, 16 size socket or wrench. Crack that and the tension will usually pull it back some. Your first roller? Here. Yeah, this okay. ram here. Okay. Yep. Okay. You'll crack that, it'll retract or slack off a little bit. You can use it, run it back and forth sometimes, just a little bit, a foot or so. It'll slide back and then you'll stick a four by four right there and drag it on backwards, it'll suck it back. Is that right? Well, one of the main questions we get is uh, what's this track life? Does anybody want to guess what that would be? Real, that's real good. That's about spot on, 12 to 1500. We've got guys that come in, uh, they, they've put five or 600 hours in, the, in their shot. But we, on the other side, we've also had guys that have two, maybe even 2500 hours on some that uh, they're, they're still pretty good. So basically, who's ever rear ends in the seat, uh, it, it comes down to guys who runs it. Basically, owner operators, they always get about 2000 hours. But to, it's the guys that maybe a PCI or Mackinac that just get in them and they just run the run them basically so but uh, 
any other questions on any of this? Uh, the other thing over here is we've kind of changed this. Uh, on the old, old models, the actual hydraulic tank, no, the fuel tank was here. So that's one thing we need to make sure everybody's aware of. Uh, they come out of the factory without this sticker. Uh, Ziegler says we're going to put a sticker on every one of them to make sure that nobody uh, puts fuel in there because that, that wouldn't be a, a cheap fix. And we also put a padlock. And when you guys are walking around up here, you can also see uh, they, did a, they did away with the sight glass. And now we have actually a little gauge there. So if your arrow's in the green, when you walk up here, you're good to go. Uh, anything else? Uh, maintenance points wise, all your grease certs are pretty, pretty well out in the open here. Uh, on this being a vertical lift machine, if you, when you're walking around this, there is an arm up here to get your vertical lift to work. It's kind of hidden a couple grease certs, so just be aware of that. Otherwise, you'll be working this machine and you'll hear a, a, a noise and you'll think, man, something needs greased, probably in the one of them arms. Each one of those points will show a grease point and the interval at which it needs to be maintained. So for example, it's going to show a, a, a walk around arrow that illustrates where all the grease points. So you've just got a kind of a good fallback point to go to for easy maintenance. The nicest thing about the right is all the service points. You've got your coolant, your fuel filter, hydraulic filter, which is just a bare element now. We're going away from a canned filter. Uh, fill points, air filter. The only thing that you need to do, fellas, to, to maintain this thing when you get on the ground is just to open the drain plug. So that's one thing that we like to show off. On the D model, you've got a fixed radiator right now, but you still have the, the ability to access it top and bottom to, to, to clean that coolant package. Well, one other thing is, uh, on our models, it's, it differs us from everybody else or some of the other guys out there is a, a hydraulically driven fan. So a lot of the other guys are still running on belts. Uh, this is going to save you guys money. If, it, if it's not hot, it's not going to run. It, it's just as simple as that. One thing, if, if you're getting that many, uh, to save you some time, you could go to uh, synthetic oil, which Cat's gone to right out of the factory. So instead of doing it every 200 or 250, you could go up to 500 hours. So you could do it half as many times and still be covered. The other thing that we like to do or, or, or try and make known as well is to extend those interchange intervals. All of these are factory filled with 6,000 hour hydraulic oil. I mean, the design life on the skid loader right now for Caterpillar is 6,000 hours. So in essence, fellas, the only thing you're going to have to change is the filter. Make sure the level stays the same, change the filter. What that added, what that, those extended intervals add to or add up to is less money out of your pocket because you're maximizing your oil. And less downtime. Exactly. Transmissions were up to, uh, I think, a thousand hour. And depending on the equipment, it, it varies. <coughs> but yeah, even the loader backhoes are up to a 500 hour interval on the engine oil. Now we're still using a synthetic. <clears throat> and as Brandon said, that's, that's less downtime. Uh, just another difference on uh, what, what we changed from the C to the D models. Uh, the battery actually used to be tucked up under the cab on the C models. Uh, somebody said they had the 79, so uh, they've decided to put it back here now. A little easier to get to. We've done away with them jumpers. Uh, fuel's back here now, like the C model. And uh, obviously you can lock that up and, and lock the back door up. So if it is out in the job sites, uh, nobody will just put sand or rocks down there for you. Our hydraulic systems actually have, if you look in here, there's a port right here for SOS point. You can hook right up and the tech can get a good sample. Engine oil, you take, you t you're draining your engine oil, you s stick it under there after it runs out for a little bit. You can draw a sample through the dipstick tube, you can catch one as you're changing it. Uh, <clears throat> when you buy a sample from Ziegler, postage is already prepaid. The only thing you have to do is catch it right down to perfect information, drop it in the mailbox, and then in about three to four days you'll see a result. You'll see a, a, a report from how it, how it maintained. And you can actually trend those wear levels and see, and for, like I said, forecast uh, a repair or possible failure. Uh, I've already got everything opened up here. We, these panels will come off. I'm going to leave them in place, but these are no, no latches or nothing. They'll come right off. 
Uh, the trip for the hood is, there's actually a lever right under here that you pull that. That's where that latch is. Uh, fuel's right up here. And then all your engine oil, engine oil checks here. Uh, high, your, that same gauge that you see on that 299 for your hydraulic is right up here. Uh, it's going to be across the board on some of these. Uh, all it is is a gauge. If it's in the green, you're good to go. If it's, it gets in one of the reds, you need to do something about it. Uh, one of the things you'll notice is uh, we've actually moved the muffler that used to come out the top. Now with the DPF, uh, we've tried to get that over there out of the site, so it's actually right behind that corner post. So it does open up your visibility a little bit. But uh, feel free to get up here. You can kind of see how everything's pretty easy to get to up here. Um, all your daily checks are right in this one spot. Three points of contact every time. On the 420Es, there's actually a sticker right down here. I still believe it's in the same spot, but your water and fuel separators right down below there if, if you took this panel out. Uh, one of the differences on the F series is actually we changed the loader arms a little bit um, and the hookups. They, the hookups are right in line with your arms. On, I think on the E's they were sticked out a little bit. No, this kind of streamlines it a little bit, a little easier to get to. And I believe the EIT buckets will fit up to this, but the straight E's they will not. So if you guys had an E, you might have, if you go into an F, you might have to check into that. Uh, we have moved the master switch. It's tucked up under here now. Uh, you can shut that off. It shuts every, all the power off to the battery. Uh, this actually comes out as well. You can get to the, your cleaners, uh, your radiator, and your hydraulic oil cooler, get them blowed out. Uh, we've done away with the metal. That's a poly tank. That, that makes it so we're not going to have any type of uh, any, any corrosive, anything in there that's going to make any type of, uh, what am I trying to think of, uh, fungus or anything like that. Some guys get worried about that. That's going to eliminate that. Algae. Yeah, algae. Come around to the back side a little bit. Uh, one of the things I want to point out, I know guys that use these are always talking to the guy on the ground or in the ditch. Uh, these back windows actually pop open, so you can have that open. Uh, and then you can actually lower that window, raise this one up to that and this whole thing will go up. So it really opens it up so you can talk to the guy in the ditch. I, I, I know our competitors, that bottom window stays in all times. So I don't know if that's something that would be helpful to you guys, but it sure seems like it makes it nice. It, it, it's not probably the best way to get out of the machine out the back window, but I imagine some guys probably do it. Uh, on the extended stick, you kind of see these plates here on each side. You take those off when this gets a little loose. Uh, all that is a puck in there on each side. Plastic pucks. That's what keeps this thing. There's no grease or nothing. There's no longer the brass or bronze wear strips. It's just a, there's a simple adjustment here. That's a poly puck inside. The only thing that we do ask is that you lubricate it with a dry graphite. We don't want to on it grease. The grease, as you know, well know, attracts dust. It's going to just bond the abrasiveness right there to your wear parts, and that's not what we're looking for. Exactly. Uh, come out of the factory with high auxiliary lines, so I'm, a lot of guys put hammers on, or uh, a lot of guys also put... Uh, Complete compactors. Yep. These, these, you can see these fittings are also teed off, where if you do, they're, they're plug and play from the factory where we equip it. Come right in, and we can mount the thumb. The thumb will be right here for the static or hydraulic. This, of course, this T right here is where you use a hydraulic thumb. If you just prefer a static or a fixed thumb, you can just mount it simply right here. It's one of the features that Caterpillar likes to tout. Um, this is a pin-on bucket, of course. Uh, we do offer a uh, quick coupler, actually two quick couplers. We have an electric one. Then we have a, a newer style coupler that comes with a, it's, it's new to us even, it's been out about a year now, but it comes with a, actually a, what, 15 16 wrench fill? Yes. It's got, a, it's got a bolt in there. It's got two actually locking mechanisms. When you put it on, the one of them catches automatically, and then you lock it back, and then you actually have to turn a, a bolt in there about 70 times. 
I know that sounds ridiculous, but actually it's, it's pretty fast. It's not near as fast as the old one where you just put the bar in and pull it down, but it, it's, it's a lot safer than the, than the old style. If you haven't been in one of these, uh, I highly recommend get in there, uh, turn the seat around, raise the window up, I mean, just so you see what we have to offer. If you don't get in there, you don't know what the differences are.